Hey guys, you ever needed to update a bunch of files pretty easily inside SolidWorks PDM, like a data card variable with the file name? Today's Q-tip is for you. We're going to talk about dispatch. This is like everybody's nemesis. You know, PDM admins everywhere say, no way, don't, don't mess with dispatch. Dispatch is a great scripting tool to help you get your work done pretty easily with just some basic lines of code so that you can do some updating or productive work inside your PDM vault without having to have an add-in or doing custom programming. If that's your case and you're wanting to, to do some updating like that inside SolidWorks PDM, today's Q-tips for you. All right, we're going to take a quick dispatch, just something that's on a right-click menu with a menu command. We're going to update a file name variable on the data card with the file name of the file. Let me explain a little bit about the dispatch engine. It's actually built as an on-the-fly compiling add-in. So if you understand what they've done here, it's actually a beautiful thing, the way that they put this together. It actually builds its own code and then recompiles it and then reinstalls it every time you right-click. So we're going to create a menu command. This is going to be the menu that you see on your right-click menu. And then for all documents is basically a way of saying a loop. For every document you have selected, it's going to loop through here. And then anything that's contained between for all documents and in for all documents, it's going to do for every document. We're going to set the card variable here. And then when you double click on this, it shows you, well, this is the box. It's going to be on the selected file or folder. It's going to update this file name variable with this variable that we've created. This is a user variable. You can get to this user variable in two different locations. One is directly from this box where you click on this menu arrow, go out to user defined variables, and then we have these variables here and you can edit variables. Let me just show you the other way to go down to the variables button and you can get to the variables in two locations, but let me just go ahead and show you this section right here. This is the variables. We're getting the file name length which is the whole file name link, which is the selected file, would be the file name dot the extension, period. That's just it. And then we are assuming that this is going to be for a SOLIDWORKS file. So we're actually going to pull back seven characters, six for SLD, PRT, SM, or DRW, and then one for the dot. So we're actually pulling back to figure out exactly where the dot is. And then what we do is go to get the file name without extension. We're going to substring. We're going to parse through the name of the selected file, starting at the zero character and going to the D retain character, which is the position of the dot. So we're going to start at the beginning and then go to where the dot is. And that's going to give us the file name without the extension. So that's D underscore file without EXT. All right. And you put all that text right down in here and you can find all of the string functions over here where you, if you, use the flyout menu, go to string, and then you can go left, right, mid, length, reverse, find, reverse find, current time, to actually get the position of the dot. But that's okay. I wanted to uh, I wanted to show how we do this in a more difficult way, and that way you can figure out the easier way. Arithmetic functions is pretty cool because you can actually do an add and a subtract, and I would recommend that you use those instead of trying to do one plus two inside of a string inside here because it won't work. You have to actually use the add and subtract. User defined variables are the variables that you created, which would be in this list here. File variables are the name of the selected file, which gives you the, the name dot the extension. The path shows you the entire path with the file name in it. The directory just shows you the directory without the file name in it. And then you've got lots of other stuff here. Okay, from there, how we're going to apply the file name without the extension to the file name variable. And that is using for all documents, which is a block start or a loop. And that is to set the file name variable to this file name, D file without extension. All right, and then if you have a configuration to update, just leave it blank and it'll update all configurations. And just so the user knows, because there really isn't a way like a progress bar, there's no status message. I just want to give them a message that it's done if it's done. All right, so I'm just saying done here. The problem that most admins find with using dispatch is that there's really not a lot of great ways to do error checking or error exception handling, error handling inside the dispatch. But that's okay. I mean, you're basically needing to make sure the files are checked out. You update data card variables, and then you check them back in. This operation is not checking the files out. We can add that to it if we want to. But in this case, I just wanted to show you quickly how this would work. So we're going to um, go ahead and close that out. Now, anytime you make a save to a dispatch, and then you go to a file inside PDM, and you're going to do a, uh, let's just say you're going to find one of these files inside here that has an extension that has six characters in it with the dot, 
then none of these are checked out. They're not checked out by me, so I'll go ahead and check it out. But watch what happens the second that I right click. It's going to take it just a moment to show me the menu because what dispatch is doing is recompiling that runtime add-in that it just created and then it's repopulating the right click menu so that's why it takes a little bit of time after you first compile a, a dispatch or you click OK and you save your dispatch once it's compiled then you'll see the right click menu appear then after it compiles it shows you the right click menu and then we have down here update file name variable with file name now if I run this right now it's going to tell me and it's going to give me an error that the file is not checked out. Update file name file and menu. Cannot set a card variable because you must check out this file for the command to run. So I'm just going to say OK. And then it says it's done. That's what I was talking about. There's really not error checking. I get an error message, but there's no way to go back and like resubmit or anything. So we will go ahead and check this file out along with, let's just say, three, uh, three others. Once we check these files out, we can then run that command against these as long as I'm checking it out as a user who has permission to check out the file. So then they're checked out by me. I'm logged in as the admin. So then we right click on these files, slide down to update file name with variable, update file name variable with file name, excuse me, and the dispatch is done. Slide off of there, select one of these files, and then the file name variable on the data card is right here is now showing the file name without the extension. This is extremely handy when it comes to, to updating files inside your vault without having, you can do these in batch and you don't have to have additional custom programming or .NET add-ins or anything special. It allows you to do some, I wouldn't say some advanced, but I would say some more than basic uh, functionality as far as updating files in your vault. We've covered dispatch and updating some file name variables on the data card with the file name of the card, file name of the file without the extension. And I just wanted to go through that quickly and just show you that. Now, one of the cool things is, is that I, I dropped in this goofy little dispatch here that just says, who am I logged in as? All it is is a right click menu. You just right click. Now, I know you can always go up here and check out who you're logged in as, but who am I logged in as? You're logged in as admin. And then up here you hover and it shows your logged in as admin. I've had that dispatch for years, but recently they added this icon up here in SolidWorks PDM so you can actually see who you're logged in as without having to go down here to the system tray. It was just something that I used that was very helpful. Uh, there's a lot more functionality built into dispatch, like uh, creating export files, which is basically creating, uh, it's like creating a little bill of material. So we'll probably get into that in one of our other ones. We may actually already have that. We already have that Q-tip in our library, so give that a look, and uh, thanks for taking a look here. You guys have a great day, and uh, as always, believe in the queue.